Good morning, kids. I'm Miss Bev, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director at Bellevue Christian Church, and we are a church where ordinary kids are learning to live everyday life like Jesus. It's so good to be back with you this week. Uh, last week, we started our new series on the parables of Jesus. Do you remember that lesson? Um, Miss Bev had a visitor with her last week. Who remembers who my visitor was last week? Say it out loud. Say it at home. Who was Miss Bev's visitor? Does anybody remember? Yes, Miss Tammy. Farmer Tammy was with us, wasn't she? Did you enjoy having Farmer Tammy with us last week? Remember, we were in the backyard of the church. You probably could hear all those trucks and cars going by, but we had a good time with Miss Tammy doing our very first lesson on the parables of Jesus. Now, you should have had this craft Come home, I hope that you did this craft about the parables of Jesus. This was the one about the sower, remember? The sower and the seed. And you should have gotten this paper and then these stickers. And you are to put your stickers on the path, the rocks, the thorns, and the good soil. Remember, kids, we always want our seeds to fall on the good soil, just like Miss Tammy's did. And remember, she had a harvest full of corn. And kids, when you let the Word of God, the Bible, fall on good soil, it helps you to learn more about Jesus and you keep the Word of the Lord, the Bible, in your heart every day. So I hope you did that craft. I hope you enjoyed it. And wasn't Miss Tammy funny when she had to explain to us what a parable was? Do you remember Miss Tammy telling us what a parable was? What did she say? She said, a pair of boy cows. A pair of boy cows. A pair of bull. Pair of bull. Two bulls. No, Miss Tammy, a pair of bull. Remember a parable, kids? is a story that Jesus told in the Bible. It's an earthly story and it has a heavenly meaning. Jesus was a storyteller and he told stories in the Bible so that the people would understand what he was trying to tell them. So today, kids, we have another parable that we are going to be talking about. Today, our parable is about talents. The talents. Who has a talent at home? Raise your hand if you have a talent. Everybody has a talent. What is your talent? Say it out loud, real loud, so Miss Bev can, can hear you. What is your talent? Okay, I hear singing and baseball and football. Um, some of you girls may like to knit or crochet. Um, what other talents do you have? Good. Well, do you know, kids, that God has blessed every one of us with special talents? Some of us have many talents, and some of us only have a few. <laughs> some of them are big, and some of them are small. But do you know, kids, that all of them, all of them matter to God. You know, kids, it's easy to compare ourselves to other people. And in doing so, sometimes we become jealous of people we think have better talents than we do. But if we let ourselves become jealous of other people, we are focused on the wrong thing. The only thing that matters to God is not what our talent is, but how we use that talent for Jesus. And today is what we're going to talk about. That's the story we're going to read. It's another parable of Jesus. And this parable is about three servants who worked for a wealthy man. Everybody say three servants. 
Okay, three servants, and they worked for a wealthy man. Each of the servants were given a certain amount of money, or as the money was called in Jesus' time, a talent. Listen to what happened to these three servants as I read this story to you, okay? We're going to be reading out of the Bible. Um, I always tell you kids, whatever Bible that you have at home, whether it's a children's Bible or it's an adult Bible, a picture Bible, that's okay. You get your Bible out and you read your stories out of the Bible because the Bible is God's word and it is truth. Today, kids, I'm going to be reading to you um, out of a story Bible, and we're going to be reading out of the New Testament. We're going to be reading out of the book of Luke, Luke 19, 11 through 27. Now, your paper at home will probably say Matthew, and that's okay because this story is in the different Gospels in the New Testament. But Miss Bev's going to be reading it out of Luke. But it's okay that your paper says Matthew, okay? So, you will be in Matthew 25, and I'm going to read it from Luke 19. And I'm going to use this little box right here and some coins. Because remember what I told you. We think of talents as things that we can do. Um, but in the Bible times, in this parable, the talents were money. Okay, so I'm going to read this for you, and we're going to look at what this story is telling us. Jesus told this story about God's kingdom. I'm going away, a prince told his servants. Make good use of these coins. <clears throat> he returned later as a mighty king. What did you do with my money, he asked. The first servant, before he left, got some coins, a whole bunch of coins. The Bible says it was like $10,000. The second servant didn't get quite as much. He got, let's say, four or five, okay? The last servant, before the master went away, got one coin. One talent. So you see, the first servant has a lot of coins. The second servant got a lot, not as many as the first. But the servant, the last servant, only got one coin. Okay? The Bible says that the first servant got 10,000. The second servant got 4,000. And the last servant got 2,000. He returned later as a mighty king. What did you do with my money, he asked the servants. So the first servant said, I made ten more coins. Wow, look at that. Look at all those talents he has. That's a lot of talent, isn't it? Well done, praised the king. You may lead ten cities. He gave him 10 more, a lot more talent. Another servant, I made five more coins. So the second servant, who had a little bit less than the first servant, he got a couple more. Great job, the king replied. You may lead five cities. A third servant mumbled, I hid your money to keep it safe. You wasted it, the king scolded. There is no reward for you. Hmm. Let's look at this, kids. Two of the servants, see these two servants? They took what the master gave them and they invested the money. They were able to double their investments so that when their master returned, they could give him the money. Their master was so pleased, and he gave both men praise. He gave them praise and more money. The master knew that he could trust these men, so he gave them even more responsibility and opportunity. 
The same cannot be said for the man who was given one talent. This man, instead of investing his talent, he chose to be bitter and jealous. He hid his talent, it said. He was upset that the other servants had more talents than he did. So he refused to do anything with his talent. He sat on it and returned it to his master. He disappointed his master and he lost what little he had. God doesn't want us kids to focus on the things we don't have. He doesn't want us to wish for more or to be jealous of others. God wants us to discover the talents that make us special, that makes you special and makes Miss Bev special. He wants us kids to focus on using those talents to serve him. So when he returns, he will say to us, he'll say to you, he'll say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. God has given every man and every woman and every child on earth unique talents. Some of us are really good at math. Some are good at science. Some of you are very musical. You can play the piano. You can sing. You can play the drums, the guitars. Some of you are great at sports. Some of you are good speakers. Some of you are very hard workers. Some of you can cook and bake. Some of you are very good at acting. Some of you maybe will be able to work on cars when you get bigger. Some of you have the gift for lifting people up and encouraging them and making them feel good. Kids, each one of us has a special set of talents and a special place in God's family. Do you know, kids, in 1 Corinthians, which is a book in the New Testament, chapter 12, Paul, he describes us as being one body with many parts. We can't take the place of anyone else. There are no unimportant parts. We all have a role to play in God's church. God has given each of us talents and a role to play in the body of Christ in the church. What a shame it would be if we never play our part because we're too focused on being jealous and bitter. God wants us to discover who he made us to be. He doesn't want you worrying about somebody else's gift or not having enough gifts. He wants us, he wants you, he wants me to find our place and to do our part. Whether you have one talent, whether you have 10 talents, all of these, whether your talent is a big talent or a small talent, your talent matters. You matter to God. If you've already discovered your talents, ask God. Ask him to show you how you can use them. If you haven't discovered your talents, ask God to show them to you. Your place in the body of Christ is important. And you need to use that talent for Jesus. Put your talents to work for God. No one. No one can play your part but you. So you see, kids, of these three servants that the master gave money to or talents to, you see the first servant and the second servant, they used their talents, and they were given more. They were given more responsibility, more opportunity, more money. The master blessed them with more. But the servant that just had one talent, he hid it. He didn't use it for Jesus. He sat on it, the Bible says, so that when the master came back, he was very disappointed. 
that that man, that servant, had not used his talent the way he should have. Kids, I know that each one of you have special gifts and talents that God has given to you. I know you do. And I hope this week that you will take time to think about those talents, talk to your parents, your grandparents, talk to an older sister, and just think about how you can use those talents no matter what they are. No talent is too small to be used. No talent is too big. All talents can be used to please God. That's why God gave you those talents. So talk to somebody, pray with somebody, and see how you can use your talents to please and to worship God. Parents, we send these Make It Stick papers home, and I would encourage you to talk to your kids about their talents. Talk to the kids about your talents and how you use your talents in the church and to serve Jesus. Uh, kids, we have a coloring page that I sent home this week, and this shirt shows the um, servants and the master and their talents that they're giving to the master. So color that paper so that you always remember to use your talents for Jesus. Kids, we've been going over a memory verse, and we'll continue to go over this throughout our series on the parables. And the Bible verse is, Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears should listen. And that is found in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 9. Kids, I hope that you will remember that memory verse, and you'll always be listening to the Word of God, that you will take these parables, these stories that Jesus told, and that you'll use them in your life and you'll talk to your parents about them. So kids, I hope this week that you listen uh, to the Word of God, that you talk to your parents about your talents and figure out how you can use them to please God and to serve God and serve the church. Um, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next week.